Hi, this is Matt here from How To Gizmo. Thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Swamp Dog fan boat, or I think it's Swamp Dog fan boat. Not quite sure how you pronounce that. This is something I got back last year. Uh, I've got a video online showing it sort of floating around the local pond, and I thought it was time that I now put a build video on there. When I got my little fan boat, it um, it never had any instructions, and it took some time to make. Um, it's not that difficult but it's just quite fiddly as you'll see in this video um, basically what you get with the boat is the main hole like the frame that goes on the back that I'm unwrapping now um, a motor um, the fan some decals and that's pretty much it to be honest um, you do need to do a little bit of soldering in the build that I'll show later on so that's just something to keep in mind and you will need to buy some bullet connectors if you do buy this by this boat because you'll need to, to solder them onto the motor right so basically um, the first thing you need to do is attach the servo onto this uh, thin black bit of plastic it's like a tray that goes over a little cubby hole if you like uh, I think the cubby holes there to put your electronics in the only thing is it fills up with water so if you do use it you need to make it watertight so in the end I didn't do that and I just decided to plonk the electrics on top with a speed controller actually on top of the boat that again wasn't a great idea after I sort of uh, used the boat for the first time but anyway you learn by your mistakes the next bit is to attach these two struts that go on the back of the boat here they're made from quite smart looking carbon fiber that seems to be quite well made um, it took me a little bit of time to figure out if they go on the inside of the bracket or the outside of the bracket and first of all I put them on wrong put them on the um, I think it was the inside when they needed to be on the outside so it's a bit daft but you know again you learn by your mistakes um, once they're attached you can then put like a metal bar between the two that mounts the motor that you should see in a minute uh, once I've realized I've put them in the wrong place there we go so I've switched them around now to be on the outside of the bracket right so basically you attach this metal bar or basically it's the motor mount in place and I think you need to use some allen keys on part of it possibly um, I'm trying to think back what I actually did now but basically once that's attached you can then um, put the base of the blades that enable the aircraft or well not the aircraft sorry the uh, the poke to turn again that was quite a fiddly process but I suppose if you know what you're doing it's great but as it came with their instructions I was trying to guess what sort of the process was um, <clears throat> And it took a bit of sort of try out and test it basically <clears throat> now the two little metal bars with the black ends sort of clip onto the blades but the two different lengths and I didn't realize at first that they were two different lengths and if you don't have them the right way around um, they don't basically fit onto the sort of carbon fiber struts um, so you do need to get them correct so just looking at the actual model now and um, basically you need the, the longer bar on the top and the shorter bar on the bottom and then um, the blade should just clip in correctly. See now the boat is starting to really sort of take shape. The next bit was to try and put this plastic sort of uh, framing on. Um, but basically that was a complete nightmare as well because it's just quite a fiddly thing to do and you've got loads of each little bolt so each sort of horizontal strut has a little one well, not bulb it's a little screw um, that you need to put in and it's just a bit of a faff but so once you get there it's great now this is another problem that I encountered I didn't actually center the servo so um, when you attach the servo probably best just to power it up and get it to center on your handset um, so that the blades are set in the right position um, again this is sort of learning by mistakes but got there in the end okay so the fan boats starting to look like a fan boat so I fitted the battery compartment tray the servo the motor mount and the back part of the frame with the blades now I moved on to soldering the bullet connectors onto the servo lead, onto the servo leads, onto the motor leads. I think I used 1.5 millimeter bullet connectors, 
I got from eBay, I think they were fairly cheap. I brought just a job lot from there. My soldering skills were a bit rusty, um, but uh, yeah, I'll have to do a bit more practicing, I think. Just as a side note, if you do go to the How To Gizmo website, you can sign up to um, put stuff in the forum, so you can have some useful stuff in there, or reply to some of the comments in there. Alternatively, if you are signed up, you become a member, and becoming a member, you can actually um, get access to some additional content that I've actually got sort of hidden on the site that you'll only see when you become a member. It does take a few hours for me to enable it, though, once an account is created, so just sort of sign up. Um, click on the registration email and remember the registration email sometimes goes into your spam or junk filter box so just you know check in there if you can't find the registration email and once you're signed up come back um sort of an hour or two later and hopefully you'll be able to see the extra sort of members area um tab on the navigation that you'll be able to get some extra content through if you're interested okay so now i'm attaching the front part of the sort of fan frame or fan cage this is quite fiddly with big thumbs Each one of these um, horizontal strips had a screw, so there's quite a lot of screws to go in. I was quite impressed with this little fan boat because it was around 30 or 32 pounds, I think, from Hobby King. And it's quite well made. Um, and it works really well actually, it goes quite fast. The only thing I have read um, from other people who have owned the boat, I think the, the motors don't last that long. But you can always change the motor and that's not too much money. So this is me now adding the electronics. I chose to put the electronics underneath the seating area. So I'll try to sort of squash it in there. I think I was using a um, S3 800 milliamp battery. And I was using the 20 amp speed controller that came with it, and then a micro orange um, RX receiver. After I had used the boat, I found out that it's not the best place to sort of mount your speed controller on the outside there because it will get wet. Unfortunately, the cables from the motor weren't very long, so probably need to make yourself a fly cable if you want to mount the speed controller um, somewhere other than where I've put it. There is a small rubber grommet at the back of the sort of tray area that you can feed the wires through. You can actually see like, where I've fed the wires through. It's supposed to keep that area waterproof. So that's the basic boat assembled. Um, all I need to do then was just put some of the decals on and uh, take it out and see how well it performs. I was quite surprised how quick this boat can shift actually. It, uh, it skims across the water very quickly. And it's a great little fun boat to build and to, to use. So thanks for watching and please check out some of my other videos.